Okay, guys, welcome back. Remember I told you guys I was going to do a K&N with SageMaker, but I've already done plenty of SageMaker in Google Cloud. I wanted to take a break from the cloud in general and just focus in machine learning also and dive more into deep learning, which I've kind of neglected a little bit with you guys. Okay, so we've got a data set of python or an anacondas valid and trained i'm going to explain to you why there are two different ways to predict the test image after you accurately classified them and how this works okay so you got trained datagen a uh, trained set right okay we're going to do basic data augmentation and uh the Class mode is binary. The reason why the batch size is 4 is because, I'll show you in a second, the batch size is the same. It's because we only got 60 images for training and 30 for test. Now, how do we solve this problem? You can get this data set from Kaggle, and I'll leave a link. But, um, and by all means, feel free to go ahead and make your own convolutional neural network and improve it. Get a better accuracy than me if you can. Okay, so CNN equals TF.Kiros.Sequential. Okay, we're going to do uh, one neuron and then this input shape for the target size. The reason why we're going to do one neuron is because it's binary. If this were multi-class, you would put how many ever classes are in here. Then we're going to do a convolution 128 with this kernel size. Always do padding equals valid. For convolutions and then strides it's up to you on the parameters the pool size and the strides remember this really affects the shape the input and the output shape whenever you're um, I did a dropout because whenever it's learning slow or it stops improving in accuracy or stops improving in loss whether it's validation or uh, training well you might want to do some dropouts right where um, there's there's too many neurons you see how there's too many neurons and then in this dense layer there's only 64,000 parameters right and then there's 73,792 that means you want to do a little dropout if you're having that problem right where there's too many okay and then convolutional 32 look at the shape right here remember your output shape has to be um, the same size as the target obviously when you are inputting it and then the last one has to be uh, obviously a one because it's binary just same as the first same as the first dense Okay, guys, as you can see, the training accuracy, the validation accuracy improved. There was a little noise with the validation loss. The training accuracy reached 100% at one point, reached 7% uh, at the end for training loss, and 76% for validation accuracy, 98% for training accuracy, and then validation loss is 77%, which is not too good. Okay, you can save your model. If you do model e history equals model, well, uh, that's the thing. Uh, CNN equals CNN I did earlier, so cnn.model.save. And then as an H5 file. That's if you want to use the load model function to... Uh, if you ever got to take it with you and use the kiros.load load model function, you can just save as an H5 file, download it, load it, and then do the last part. Okay, we're going to try uh, using the model itself to predict. Okay, now guys, now beware. I'm going to show you why it's better to do the other way. Yes, that's an anaconda, and how you get a... Uh, Train class and dices was from the train set. And then there's class and dices. And then as you can see, there's 15 items. 
classes, cnn.model.predict. Yeah, that's correct. The next one is not correct, but it was correct in the other method. Okay, so there you see a python, right? But it, it's, it predicted anaconda. Here's why this is the better way to do it. And these are the same pictures, beware. Okay. Because it predicted anaconda, right? Okay. A hundred percent chance anaconda. Here's why it did it. Okay, because when you look at the depth per pair image 384, we're using CB2 and then we're using uh, it to resize and reshape on this index. And then uh, CNN.predict prepare, meaning the image is pre processed. You, and then you're going to see uh, why the second prediction is accurate as well. This is just for fun, just to read it. Just to visualize it, I mean. Okay, now here we go again. 384, because that was the input shape, remember? Image array, new array, a new array reshape. Okay, same as the others. And then this is the same picture that it got wrong, only here it gets right and with 100% confidence. You even see this class label? Zero. One. The reason why this did it is because we uh, prepared the image. We pre-processed pre it in a way. Because look, it got this one wrong, Anaconda, Python. Now, why is that? Because it pre-processed the image. So you see, even with a, a good validation accuracy, good training loss, and good training accuracy, and not too bad validation loss, this is kind of hard to do with uh, 60 training pictures and 30 test pictures, obviously. And then these snakes are pretty hard because what you're doing in this convolutional network is teaching it to look for patterns. You're teaching it to look for patterns. This is what deep learning is with imagery. Now, be, um, here's the thing, guys. This is used in, art, in artificial intelligence is used in medicine as well. So... Um, you know, you guys can do the same thing. If you guys know how to build your own convolutional neural network, start, um, do a pneumonia data set from Kaggle. I'm going to leave a link to this Python or Anaconda data set from Kaggle. Now, here we go, guys. That's it. Thank you.